Patrick Baldwin Jr.'s brutal high ankle sprain impacted his movement at the college level, which downgraded his draft stock. Nevertheless, Golden State can thank 27 general managers for taking that injury too seriously and gifting them a defensively versatile 6'10 flamethrower in Baldwin Jr. Here's what makes PBJ a diamond in the rough, and also a breakdown of the Warriors player with a journey to the NBA you're not going to believe. Before continuing, only 13.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. For NBA edits, follow at dflowhoops on Instagram, click the link in the description down below to take you there, back to the content. While Baldwin Jr. was just the 28th overall pick in 2022's NBA Draft, before his lone NCAA campaign at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee coming out of high school, he was one of the most highly touted basketball prospects across the nation. Patrick and this year's first overall pick in the Orlando Magic's Paolo Boncaro were battling it out to determine who was the best player in the country, and entering his freshman year of college, Baldwin Jr. was considered 2021's fifth best high school player. However, midway through his senior season at Hamilton High School, Patrick suffered a significant high left ankle sprain with a bone bruise, he never had surgery, and the setback continued to bother him in college, worsening after another left ankle sprain on November 23rd. In February, it was announced that he would sit out the rest of the season and focus on preparing for the draft. In one injury-limited college year, Baldwin Jr. averaged 12.1 points and 5.8 rebounds on an abysmal 34.1% shooting over 11 inconsistent games. The high ankle sprain Baldwin Jr. suffered was compared to NFL wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints, Michael Thomas, who's still hampered by the injury after two years of rehab. Still, based off his upside, it was projected that Baldwin Jr. could go as high as pick number 18 in this year's draft. Of course, those injuries could linger throughout the course of his NBA career, and it's only been two preseason games, but based off how Patrick's looked so far, his ankle injury doesn't seem to be lingering like scouts said it would. Instead, Baldwin Jr. has proved to be one of 2022's top draft robberies, and has resembled a more than capable pick and pop floor spacer, plus on the other end, he's displayed the smarts and mobility to be a capable drop coverage defender. Providing instant offense off the bench, in both of his career games so far, after touching the ball for the very first time on the night, he's hit a three-pointer right away. Patrick had a welcome to the NBA moment by airballing this triple, but you still get a feel for how difficult his 9 foot 3 inch release point will be to contest. Baldwin only received 8 minutes in his pro debut, but scored 7 points in them, making 2 shots and missing 2 from the field, which included coming off a Ryan Rollins cross screen and isolating in the post with a Kevin Durant-esque fadeaway on the weak side. It seems Baldwin Jr. quickly adapted to the speed of the game, as he looked a lot more poised in his second pro outing, which increased his playing time. As Travion Williams taps it out and gathers the Rollins miss, Baldwin Jr. has the awareness to realize there's a chance for the O board, and stays in the vicinity for a spot up triple. After setting a flare screen which baits an attack from Witherspoon, Patrick's off ball movement to swiftly shuffle back and left leaves him wide open with Gafford guarding a potential drive. Notice how a defender is closing out midway through his release right here, but Baldwin Jr. remains unfazed. He knows how incontestably tall his jumper is, paired with the footwork and smoothness on that shot. You see why the man was so hyped up entering college. Defensively and on the glass was where Baldwin Jr. showed off shocking adaptability in the second of two in Japan. His insane 7 foot 2 wingspan for a mobile forward is put to good use on plays like this, where DeLon Wright tries to muscle in after failing to drive past Baldwin, then pump fakes to no avail as Patrick stays down for the stuff, then starts the fast break by tapping it ahead, some eyebrow raising one on one clamps. Wizards forward Isaiah Todd thinks he has a putback on this play, but watch the balance and strength from PBJ to spring up for the board and stay under control despite taking contact. Elite rebound, and he picks up another beastly board just like that, right here. Baldwin even got involved on the offensive glass, but defensive boards like this over three defenders 
really made the Warriors' late comeback possible. You saw a bit of Patrick's isolation defense, but as he simultaneously cuts off Wright's passing lane to Isaiah and the driving lane, then fakes the help on Taj Gibson, intercepting his errant outlet pass, you get a sense for Baldwin Jr.'s off-ball defense. And right after that, watch the smooth bounce pass through two defenders to set up Mac McClung. Back to the offensive side, where Baldwin saved his best for last in the fourth quarter, helping the Dubs outscore the Wiz 30-10 in that frame. Watch the presence of mind and poise to not just catch and shoot the midi from McClung, but step back to the right corner while taking a warm-up dribble into his jumper. This missed catch-and-shoot triple looked fundamentally sound, but that was the only deep-range shot he missed all night. Patrick hit four of the five three-pointers he attempted in the Dubs' win, the fourth of which came on what should have been a four-point play as Gibson high-fives him. Considering he'll get more than the inch of space he needs in the Warriors system with all the gravity drawers, that makes Baldwin Jr.'s contested shooting ability a luxury. The reason why Patrick's a hidden gem, aside from the fact that he fell into the hands of the reigning champions, is the fact that his skill set is built for the modern NBA. The game nowadays is run by versatile, lengthy, and most prominently shooting wing players who can switch positions 1 through 5. Baldwin Jr. showed flashes of being just that early on, and his history of being a top basketball prospect can make you believe that the man's legit. The Golden State Warriors front office has an eye for talent that's on a different level, which is proven in how strong the team's third unit is. The Team C dubs consisting of former lacrosse player Pat Spencer prove that the Warriors are willing to take a chance on anyone. Pat Spencer has had an absolutely wild journey leading him to the Warriors training camp roster. After becoming the all-time leader in assists over four years playing NCAA lacrosse at Loyola, Pat used his college graduate year eligibility to play basketball at Northwestern University. Spencer then played a season in Germany, then signed with the Wizards G League team a year later, leading up to Golden State signing him to an Exhibit 10 deal, an unheard of journey to the NBA. In Golden State's second preseason game, Pat Spencer tied Mac McClung as a game high, plus 20, scoring 6 points on 6 of 6 foul shots and dropping 3 dimes. He also nearly had a mind-boggling poster jam, but missed the dunk. Whether Spencer makes the Warriors roster or not, expect him to get some run with another NBA team this year if he has to, and as disappointing as it is that Mac McClung was cut, I see him getting picked up by another team. Going back to the most heavily evaluated player today in Baldwin Jr., who's your player comparison for the man? Two shoutouts next video for my previous upload and this one. Thanks for watching.